people what's going on guys KDC here and welcome back to a brand new video for today i will show you the top three highest damage builds for pvp and pve after the new update in new world so for each and every single build i will explain what attributes and perks you want to have then what gems and specific gear you want to use for each weight category so you could get 100 the best stats out of your build then as well i will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies to get to the highest damage and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is the highest damage build in the game and I like to call it as the ultimate sniper class and for the weapons you want to go with the musket and void gauntlet and then these are the attributes you want to have. So basically this build is structured around doing a lot of damage from very far distance and you will not have almost any defensives whatsoever but the single target damage that you will do will be very high. So first of all you want to get your dexterity to 300 and then start putting points in intelligence and around level 60 you should have 300 dexterity and 150 intelligence and as this is a full glass cannon build you want to go with the light category and the best gear setup is to have medium chest piece and then the rest light armor so then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the musket and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the power shot and then get these two perks then afterwards unlock the second ability called the powder burn and then get these two perks as well and lastly unlock the last third ability called the shooter stance and then get the next perk to him as well and now let's move over to the other side and unlock these two perks and that's it now from this point and onwards you're feel free to choose to unlock all the other perks in whatever order you like and now let's move over to the second weapon which is the void gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock these three perks and then the first ability called the petrifying scream and then get these two perks then now let's get the second ability called the oblivion and then get these two perks then from now let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the orb of decay and then get these four perks and that's it now again from this moment you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you want okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where i will show you the best way to play this build so first of all we have the musket and the first q spell is called the power shot which when activating overloads your musket with gunpowder causing the next shot to deal a bunch of damage and it's super good in removing someone's health to 60 percent just from one shot then the second ability is called the powder burn and this ability again overloads your musket with gunpowder and deals damage but additionally will make the target burn for nine seconds and lastly we have the third ability called the shooter stance which when using your character enters a shooting stance and all shots fired deal additional damage and the reloading time of the musket is reduced by 70 percent so then now let's move over to the second weapon which is the void gauntlet and for our first Q spell we have the ability called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and your teammates inside the circle will get 20% damage increase but on the other hand your enemy standing in a circle will be taking void damage every second then the second ability is called the petrifying scream which when using will deal damage stagger and root enemies in front of you for two seconds and lastly we have the third ability called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go through your enemies and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage absorption and then later that orb will come back and heal your nearby teammates and yourself and lastly if you hold the left mouse button you can get your mana back but it will remove your health so for this specific build i definitely do not recommend to use this mechanic so then what i usually try to do for this build is to alternate between normal musket shots and abilities so the way you want to use this build is to always stay very far away from the enemy no matter if you're doing pvp or even pve so as far as your playstyle goes you mainly want to use musket normal attacks and activate its abilities if you see that you can easily hit the enemy so then use the power shot or power burn and when a bruiser player is charging at you then activate the shooter stance ability and burst him down then afterwards switch to the void gauntlet and i prefer to use my oblivion spell to get 20 percent more damage but you can use it to support your teammates as well and then if you directly are getting attacked and need to protect yourself then use both abilities that are petrifying scream and orb of decay as well like i've mentioned i most of the time use my musket because it deals high damage and then when i get attacked or want more damage i switch to the void gauntlet for extra support 
and then I go back to the musket and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This musket and void gauntlet weapon combination right now after the nerf is the highest damage build in the game and by using these weapons you basically become the sniper of the team and you don't have any defensives so your main goal is to always stay away from the enemy as far as you can but then just aim and shoot and destroy all of your enemies. So then last but not the least for your musket and void gauntlet you want to use the aquamarine gem and then for all of your gear use the enix gems and to increase even more damage for special events like wars or if you are rich enough then buy honing stones and attribute food which for around 30 minutes will give you more attribute points and from 5 to 7 percent more damage on your weapon depending on what tier honing stone and food you're using and then on top of all this to go from 98 percent damage possibility to 100 or even more on your void gauntlet and musket you want to have one or two of these perks which is called the keen and it gives 10 percent crit chance then the second perk is called the enchanted and it gives 9% damage to your light or heavy attacks. And lastly we have the third perk called the Vicious and it increases 10% critical damage. So if your weapon has one or two of these perks then you significantly increase your DPS. As a new player I would recommend to just copy this build's weapon masteries and equipment. And when you get to level 60 and you really want to max out your damage then start buying your weapons with the best perks, start using honing stones and everything else I have said in this video. So in a quick summary, if you want to play a build that right now has the highest single target damage in the game then this is the build for you so enjoy so then moving over to the second build which is the one and only fire staff and void gauntlet and these are the attributes you want to have so first things first no matter from which level you start using this build you first of all want to get your intelligence to 150 or even 200 and then start building your constitution and at the end game always have this 3 to 1 ratio so have at least intelligence 3 times more than constitution and around level 60 you should have 300 intelligence 50 dexterity and 100 constitution and and lastly for your gear you want to go with the medium category and the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest piece, light pants, medium gloves and boots and this will give you 22.9 kilogram weight which is exactly just below the heavy weight category and technically you could get about 3 to 5 percent extra damage if you choose to go light armor but as a mage player your abilities really don't have that much of a range so in my opinion for pvp and pve you have to use medium armor but it's up to you so then moving over to the first weapon which is the fire staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability call the fireball and then get these three perks then afterwards let's take a closer look at the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the incinerate and then get these three perks and lastly unlock the last third ability called the burnout and then get these three perks as well and now from this point you'll feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next okay so now let's go over to the second weapon which is the void gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the void blade and then get these three perks then afterwards unlock the second ability called the oblivion and then get these two perks and lastly get the last third ability called the petrifying scream and then unlock the next two perks to him as well and that's it now again you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you like. So now we have come to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all we have the fire staff and the Q ability aka the burnout is a big dash spell which you can use for mobility or if you hit enemies while dashing they will take extra burn damage. Then the R ability is called the incinerate and when you use it it creates a fiery explosion around you which deals damage, inflicts burn effects and causes enemies to get pushed back for 3 meters. And lastly we have the F ability called the fireball which is very powerful damage spell and as it is an aoe spell you don't have to hit directly an enemy you can just aim it at the ground where the target is standing on and it will damage him as well so now let's move over to the second weapon which is the void gauntlet and the first q spell is called the void blade and after activating you basically get a void dagger which you can use like any other melee weapon and by using auto attacks not only you will do a lot of damage but as well reduce your enemy's damage absorption then the second ability is called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and your teammates inside the circle will get 20% increased damage but on the other hand your enemies standing in the circle will be taking damage over time and lastly our third ability is the petrifying scream which when using will deal damage stagger and root enemies in front of you for two seconds and like in the first build if you hold the left mouse button you can get your mana back but it will remove your health so for this specific build i definitely do not recommend to use this mechanic if you have watched my previous videos then you will know that i only would suggest to use this for healer 
others. So, the way you want to use this build in combat is first of all use your fire staff, light or heavy attacks and keep on spamming them till you're close enough to the enemy and then shoot him with the fireball. And then when you get attacked or find yourself surrounded by one or multiple enemies, then use the incinerate ability and I usually prefer to save the burnout ability for escaping so you can use it to run away or towards an enemy. And then when your fire staff abilities are on cooldown or your enemy is very close to you, then switch to the void gauntlet and activate the oblivion ability and then the void blade and keep on using auto attacks plus the petrifying scream to cancel the enemy's spells or just root him in one place to finish him off. This particular build doesn't have one best way to play it, so the more you will play it the better you will get. Just most importantly remember to use fire staff for distance fighting and when your teammates need more damage or you're getting attacked then switch to the void gauntlet. So with all this said now let's go over my final conclusions for this build. This fire staff and void gauntlet weapon combination right now is very high damage build and you can use it for pvp and PvE as well. And the next tip I only use for 50v50 wars or very hard expeditions as it requires for you to spend your gold. But if you really want to max out your damage then for food use the plus 40 intelligence food. But if you can't afford it then get plus 30 or plus 20 intelligence food. And then as well don't forget to use honing stones. I personally prefer to use tier 4 honing stones as they are at a decent price. And when using them you have to have one of your weapons in your hand and not on your back or it will not work and then use it as any other consumable and this will give you from 5 to 7 percent more damage depending on which tier you bought and then on top of all this like in the first build you want to get all these three perks on your weapons which are called the enchanted vicious and keen and then of course last but not the least for the void gauntlet and fire stuff you want to use the opal gem and then for your gear amulets rings and everything else use the enix gems and that's about it just of course remember to use medium jumps so your stamina would not ever be at 100% and this will activate plus 15% damage gem. So if you're looking for one of the best and highest damage builds for a mage class then these are the weapons for you so have fun. And now moving over to my last and final build which is the great sword and sword with shield and these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0 you want to get your strength and dexterity to 200 and then start building your constitution and around level 60 you should have 200 strength, 150 dexterity and 100 constitution. And then last but not the least for your gear you want to go with the medium category and you want to use one of those circle shaped small shields as well and yes each shield type has different weight so don't forget to use the light as shield that still will make you in the medium category. So then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the great sword and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first you want to unlock the first ability called the cross cut and then get these two perks. Then now get the second ability called the skyward slash and then get these two perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock these two perks. And then the last final ability called the steadfast strike and then get these two perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can spin your points in whatever way you like. So then moving over to the second weapon which is the sword and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to select these two perks and then the first ability called the leaping strike and then get these two perks. Then from here let's go over to the other side and unlock the last two abilities called the shield rush and shield bash. And then lastly get these two perks and that's it. Now again from this point and onwards you can spin your points in whatever way you prefer. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. And for the first weapon we have the great sword and your first Q ability is called the cross cut which will perform 3 quick slash attacks that with each attack will do more damage. Then the second skill is called the skyward slash which will swing up your sword that will stagger, do damage and apply a rent stacks on the enemy. And then lastly we have the steadfast strike which will stab your enemies and can do up to 2 hits which will do damage more and more and restore mana upon finishing the animation. And in PvE, this skill can be used to aggro all the monsters as well. And then for the second weapon we have the sword with shield and your Q spell is called the leaping strike which will make you leap forwards that will do damage and stagger the enemy. Then the second skill is called the shield rush which will quickly make your character rush forwards while dealing damage and pushing back your enemy. This skill is great for counter attacks, to cancel the enemy animation or to help out your teammates. And then lastly we have the shield bash which is a short skill that will stun the enemy for 2 seconds and this is the longest stunning ability in the game. Ok so then let's move over to the rotation and as I've already said if you're farming mobs in PvE or doing PvP 
the same general principles and rules apply. So at the start of the fight you won't use the sword and shield, and use the leaping strike to close the distance between you and the enemy. Then now use the shield rush and then when the stagger ends, right away use the shield bash, which is the longest stun in the game. So then in those few seconds, now we want to switch to the great sword and use the cross cuts, and keep spamming the heavy attacks. Then when the enemy starts dealing back damage to you, then now we use the skyward slash to do damage and stagger. And then lastly we use the steadfast strike, and then from here we just keep on using the great sword attacks till the enemy gets eliminated or if you ever get in trouble then switch back to the sword with shield and just keep on blocking the enemy attack by holding the right click and that's it so now for my last and final conclusions for this build this great sword and sword with shield weapon combination is super fun to play and as you're using a medium armor, you can take some damage and at the same time do very high DPS numbers. So then last but not the least, for the great sword and sword with shield, you want to use the opal gem. And then for all of your gear, use 3 malachite and 2 onyx gems. And then lastly, on your character, you want to equip the heart rune of detonate. And then on top of all this, to find out the best weapon and gear perks, watch this video which is titled, which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build. You can find the link in this video description or just scroll through my channel. And in that video, I will specifically explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear and weapons and much more. So in a quick summary, if you're looking to do high damage and you want a fun greatsword build, then this is the one for you, so enjoy. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good new world builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.